Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Row here. Before I begin today, a big thank you to the person for the virtual gift voucher. You didn't leave a name, but whoever you are, a big thank you. And I hope you have a very Merry Christmas with your loved ones and family too. But on to today. Today, Blood Angels Week continues on. And well, I thought it's about time. We had a little successor chapter involvement. Because today, oh boy, we have Gabriel Seth, chapter master of the Flesh Terrors, taking on Astaroth, the high chaplain of the Blood Angels. Spoiler warning to begin, the events we are discussing today are from the short story Gabriel Seth, the Flesh Terror by Andy Smilly. As always, I really recommend you read the story for yourself first as that's the best way to enjoy the lore for yourself. Not only that, we help to support the Great Games Workshop and Black Library, because without them, we don't have this amazing lore to talk about. I will put a link in the description as always. But, with that said, let's just jump straight in. Now, Gabriel Seth is a headstrong individual to say the least, but he and he alone has virtually single-handedly dragged his chapter back from falling into oblivion. For centuries the Flesh Terrors were headed solely in the direction of extinction, until Seth, through his strength of character and sheer force of will, managed to mould the chapter into a more focused direction. And while the Flesh Terrors of all the Sons of Sanguinius still feel the pull of the rage more keenly, the chapter has now achieved some semblance of stability. And despite the differences Seth has with Dante, the two have formed a delicately balanced respect. And so it was the Flesh Terrors stood firm with the Blood Angels during the devastation, at the hands of High Fleet Leviathan. Now, during this short story, it begins with Seth alone in the hold of a gunship as it breaks through the atmosphere of Baal, the homeworld of the Blood Angels. And it's unusual to say the least for a chapter master to be alone at any time, let alone arriving upon another chapter's homeworld. And the situation takes a more intriguing turn when after the shuttles landed, Seth orders a self-destruction of the Servitor, what's left of its brain and memory being burnt out and wiped from existence. Gabriel Seth, chapter master of the Flesh Terrors, had come to the seat of the High Chaplain of the Blood Angels, the location of which is known only to the Blood Angels chapter itself and chapter masters of its successors. So whatever Seth's reasons for coming here, he still holds true to the old traditions, wiping the servitor's memory banks clean. As Seth approaches the doorway, he falls into the shadow of huge ornate angeled statues and realizes he's already being watched. Within the shadows, five armored figures are stalking him, armor dark as midnight with black-winged jump packs to match. These are the Erelim, the shadow opposite of the Sanguinary Guard, and it is their duty to protect the reclusium of the High Chaplain, whatever the cost. And it's a duty they will not forsake, even if it means eliminating a chapter master. Seth gives them a knowing glance, and there's an absolutely killer line of him giving them the murderous glare and the slowly shaking of his head, letting them know in no uncertain terms, if they try to stop him, he will kill them. Whether Seth's warning worked, or the Erelim were already expecting his arrival, we can only speculate. But reaching the doorway, Seth reads the engraved scripture aloud. What man could not do, the Emperor sent his sons to accomplish. They were an antidote to the weakness of flesh, 
and the sin of mind that kept man from greatness. His sons he sent to bear the cost of life and death, so that man may prosper. Such a heavy burden was as poison to the blood of his sons, and so the emperor sent his executioner to set the afflicted free. And this is why Seth has come. He's infuriated as he reads. This was simple legitimization of killing a brother, and he would have no more of it. The door opening with his bioscan, he enters into the darkness. And there alone, beneath a statue of the angel, his quarry awaits. Astaroth the Grim, the Redeemer of the Lost. Seth growls at him to stand, and after several long moments of silence, he does, replying in his slow cold voice that he wondered when Seth would come. And as ever, Seth's anger rises. Storming towards the High Chaplain, throwing away his robe to reveal his damaged power armor beneath, still scarred from recent combat. And Astaroth remarks, he should have finished his last fight before coming to start another. And this is just a great scene, really raising the tension. You can't help but get the sense that these two titans are about to go toe to toe. And as Seth retorts with an equally snide remark, the true reason for Seth's arrival becomes clear. This is my house, Flesh Terror. I have told you before to mind your tone. And I have told you before, Astaroth, Seth drew level with the figure, that I will deal with my brothers in a manner of my choosing. His voice was a growled whisper, like the scraping of sand on flesh. You will not kill another flesh terror while I draw breath. Astaroth's face was as cold calm as the grave. The fate of the damned is not yours to decide. He took a step towards Seth, his dark, fathomless eyes glaring down at the smaller space marine. And never forget that you draw breath only by the grace of the Emperor. Seth ground his teeth, quashing the urge to tear Astaroth's eyes from their sockets. You think yourself apart from us. For all of this darkness, Seth gestured around them. For all of the theatre you use to hide your true nature, you are still a blood angel, and we are all lost, cousin. None amongst the bloodline are above the madness, not even you. And so there we have it, as you might have expected, Seth takes exception to Astaroth ending the Fallen amongst his chapter. And considering our look yesterday at Astaroth performing his duty, it's interesting here now to see the repercussions. I have to admit, I don't think there's many other chapter masters out there willing to come to Baal itself to vent their anger. But Seth is a different breed. It's an interesting debate to have here. Is Seth right? Does Astaroth have the right to end the lives of those not within his chapter? Yes, they may all be sons of Sanguinius, but the Blood Angels are no longer a legion. They are a chapter. While there may be a certain reverence and respect given to the Blood Angel's name, technically, the successors owe them no debt. For they are not the legion of old. And that goes especially for a second founding chapter, such as the Flesh Terrors. And for Astaroth's point, he is simply performing a duty that has been in place since the earliest days of the chapter. If it was not ordained to be that way, he would not hear the music calling him to the lost brothers of other chapters. The sorrow of Sanguinius cares not for chapter colours, only that they are all of his blood. As the argument continues, even Astaroth's calm composure begins to slip, and the anger and rage begin to crack through. 
with Seth calling him insane for killing fellow brothers, and Astaroth retorting with a barb, we can't all indulge our weakness, complete with a condescending smirk. And this is a real nice contrast to the Astaroth we got to see yesterday, before we saw the caring, sorrowful higher chaplain, who regrettably performed a duty that had to be done. There was no mirth or enjoyment. But here, we see the blood angel within, the anger so easily ready to boil, and yes, the pride too. And with that comment, the talk is over, as Seth crashes his elbow into Astaraf's chest. The fight is on, with Seth hammering punches into Astaraf's face. The High Chaplain counters by activating his jump pack, taking the momentum away from Seth, grabbing his head with both hands and essentially performing a DDT straight into the rock floor. With Seth struggling to remain conscious, Astaraf begins to walk away, telling the Flesh Terror that although he may be strong, although he may have his anger, he cannot hope to beat the Redeemer of the Lost. And in what was a real surprising turn of events for me, Seth actually agrees in his mind. But as he rises to stand once more, he remains defiant, telling Astaroth he doesn't need to win, because for every minute the High Chaplain is fighting him, he's not out there butchering his brothers. And Astaroth's anger snaps, charging at the Flesh Terror once more. Seth, forced to grab hold of the larger Blood Angel, returns punches as best he can, suffering more hits for each one he lands. Until finally, he manages to break Astaraf's jump pack, and together, the two angels fall off the platform on which they wrestled, to the ground down below, landing with an almighty crash, shattering the bone and rock beneath. As the two blooded fighters stagger once more to regain their bearings, Seth has a final word for Astaraf. If he kills any more flesh terrors, cousin or not, Seth will come back. And he won't be coming alone. And Astaraf's reaction is pretty much the same one that I had. Did Seth literally just threaten the Blood Angels chapter? asking him if he's gone mad. But Seth simply replies as he limps away that he will do what must be done. It really is quite the ultimatum, and I don't know if we ever got an answer to this scenario, but man, I would love to see a follow-up. Would Astaraf call his bluff? Knowing the character of Astaraf, I find it hard to believe he would leave brothers afflicted by the rage regardless of Seth's threat. But, if he spoke of this with Dante, I can imagine Dante attempting to be a little more diplomatic, although what he would make of Seth's threat is a little more intriguing. Most likely he'd put it down to a rage fueled rant, but still, the threat of war against another chapter is something never to be taken lightly. Who is in the right and who is in the wrong? Is Seth right for calling Astaraf a murderer, demanding he no longer kill flesh terrors fallen to rage? Or is Astaraf for telling Seth he was chosen for this role, and Seth has no place to tell him otherwise? It's an interesting debate for sure. I can see both points to their arguments. But if I had to choose, I would probably side with Astaraf. It's like he said he was chosen for the role. He doesn't perform it by choice, and if it wasn't meant to be, he wouldn't be drawn to those fallen to madness. But would Seth truly go to war over it? Man, that's an interesting what-if scenario. The Flesh Terrors versus the Blood Angels. Man, what a fault that is. But as always guys, what do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support really means a lot to me, it truly does. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. 
And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too? But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again tomorrow as Blood Angels Week continues.